Well, I think it's a very long-term trend. Uh, as, as economic historians know, uh, dethroning a global reserve currency is not a work of uh, weeks or months or even years, but, uh, but decades. Sterling survived long after the United Kingdom was no longer able to support a global reserve currency after the First World War and a lot of the Second World War by way of historic analogy, and there's no obvious substitute for the dollar. But all that said, countries which uh, consider themselves under economic attack from the United States uh, are bound to try to adapt. And the obvious way, or one of the obvious ways, is to, if, they, if there's a threat to uh, dollar transactions, if the United States Treasury is trying to prevent banks set, uh, having uh, normal access to the global dollar market, is to settle their currencies between state entities and central banks, settle their trade rather, in local currency. Now, you quoted the Russian Foreign Minister, but Finance Minister Anton Siluanov uh, put it more technically, more precisely, I think for investors this is useful. He said that there's no question of, of abandoning the dollar in a pricing uh, way. If you're, if you're trading uh, globally traded c c uh, commodities, which the pricing is benchmarked in US dollars, that will be the price, but you'll switch it in to the equivalent uh, of foreign currency. Tricky if your currency is as vo is volatile as the Turkish lira, uh, even but the ruble, well, even the ruble, lately. of course, has been hit by recent sanctions, both prospective and actual. But nevertheless, the idea is that you would then uh, re-denominate those trades into uh, the local currency and settle it that way. And I think that is a trend that's beginning. In Shanghai, there is a petro yuan, uh, which is embryonic, but is, uh, is going to develop. Uh, so uh, it's something definitely to watch. Perhaps more alarming then is the, the comment uh, really around the fact they might be thinking about it. So therefore, it sort of creates this perspective us against them. Are we seeing fundamental changes now in foes and allies, given all the sanctions that have been lobbed between countries and the trade spat that's been playing out between the United States and key countries? Uh, I think, again, uh, this type of economic sanction, especially uh, using the power of the United States Treasury in global finance to uh, try to throttle other economies and to, to cut off banks in particular, uh, is uh, is an immensely powerful card to play, but it will have diminishing returns, like anything. The more you play it, it's bit, uh, an analogy might be some sort of inoculation or, or uh, ba bacterial resistance to antibiotics, something like that. The more you play it, the more there is resistance. And uh, even the European Union uh, is speaking, as regards Iran, of settling oil trades with Iran after November uh, through the uh, central banks because no commercial bank will obviously do this because they'd be crushed by the United States authorities. Uh, now, uh, that would be, of course, more significant because the EU is supposed to be an ally of the United States. Uh, but this is definitely the way of the world. It's not sensational, but a very interesting uh, shift uh, from uh, a reaction to the intensive use by the United States of financial and economic sanctions. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.